اشهدوا ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهدوا ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of almighty allah the most gracious ever merciful we praise him and invoke his blessings on his noble prophet muhammad mustafa peace and blessing of god be upon him my dear respected amir sahib distinguished guest of the promised messiah my dear brothers and sisters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and peace be upon you all the topic of my speech this beautiful morning is titled love for the prophet muhammad the gateway to divine love in the holy quran allah allah taala says the english translation if you love allah follow me allah will then love you and forgive you your faults chapter 3 verse 32 of the holy quran this verse from the holy quran is the essence of the title of my speech love for the prophet muhammad mustafa peace and blessing of god be upon him the gateway to divine love everything in this wonderful world has been created by almighty god almighty allah he is the maker and master of all people to teach them those useful things which will make life better for them he sent his prophets prophets are chosen from ordinary people but god almighty talks to them and he send them to deliver his message to other beings throughout history almighty god has sent such prophets to all nations of the world almighty god have sent adam the prophet abraham the prophet noah the prophet jacob the prophet jesus the prophet buddha the prophet confucius and the prophet muhammad mustafa peace be upon him and peace be upon all of them the prophet muhammad mustafa peace be upon him was his dearest best and chief of all the prophets in fact the prophet muhammad set the best example for others to follow he was the most influential man in history It is of extreme significance that even non-Muslims hold the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing of God be upon him in the highest regard. This is noted in a book titled The 100 The 100 a ranking of the most influential person in history. This book was written by Michael H Hart. The book begins with the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as the number one person out of 300 influential individuals in history. He states Michael Hart states the following. He says and I quote he says my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular levels he says of humble beginnings muhammad founded and spread one of the world's greatest religions and became an immensely effective political leader he says today 1300 years a century rather after his death his influence is still powerful and very pervasive end of quote the people who believed the people who believed in what the holy prophet muhammad peace and blessing of god be upon him remembered his teachings of what he did by heart they told others about it and these began to be written down 
we refer to these things, the Hadith and tradition, as tradition. In fact, recorded history was started by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa, peace and blessing of God be upon him. More is known about him than anyone else before him. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad was an ordinary human being, but his life embraced all aspects throughout which excellent standard of high morals have shown. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa, peace and blessing of God be upon him, in the Holy Quran, chapter 6, he states, verse 163, he says, My prayer, my prayer, and my sacrifice, and my life, and my death are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all the worlds. In this verse, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa, peace and blessing of God be upon him, declared that all phases of his life were devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first and foremost features of his life was the love of Almighty God. Since the day the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, received his first message from his Lord, he spent every moment of his life worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and pleasing, and pleasing rather, preaching the word of Almighty God, fighting and fighting for Almighty God and praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the prophet of Almighty God, the prophet Muhammad Mustafa. Peace and blessing of God be upon him. In fact, even the non-believers in Mecca, even the non-believers in Mecca, they would say, oh my God, Muhammad, Muhammad has fallen in love with his God. He is not only used to lead the, the five daily prayers because the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was always in the mosque. He was always praying. And so he set the example for all of his followers and his companions. He was always in the mosque. He not only used to lead the five daily prayers in the mosque, but also stood so long in the prayers at night that his feet were swollen from praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After, after the call, his whole life was a long and hard struggle for abolition of adultery, that is idol worship, and establishing the unity of Almighty God. But all the hardship he faced, all the hardship he faced never made him doubt that even for a single moment, the existence and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the best lesson he left for his followers, to believe to believe, to depend, and to pray to Almighty God. He himself used to pray sometime in these words, to you I have submitted, in you I believed in, with you I put my trust in, from you I seek judgment, to you I turn, it is to you alone I worship. From Al-Baqarah, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, feared and trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, he had full faith in his mission. He relied completely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his success. He kept Almighty Allah before his mind every day, every hour, and every minute of his life. He prayed standing to Almighty God. He prayed sitting, walking. Before he goes to sleep, he was praying to Almighty God. And when he wake up, he said, Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Almighty God before and after eating and drinking, when entering and leaving his house, when leaving the mosque and entering the mosque, when meeting friends, when parting with friends, when hearing good news, when wearing new clothes, before and after answering the call of nature, he would say a prayer. In short, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of Almighty God be upon him, every moment and every movement, movement of his life, he had a special prayer. He prayed long and regularly. Often he was in prayers for the whole night. In fact, we could say his, almost his entire life, not almost, his entire life was centered around the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, loving the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, loving the Holy Prophet Muhammad will lead us 
to the gateway to divine love. Whenever a true Muslim is reminded about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. Whenever a true Mormon, whenever a true believer of Almighty God is reminded about the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu life, his eyes is filled with burning desire to follow his excellence example and utter his blessings upon the noblest of, of all the prophets of Almighty God. This is the gateway to divine love, loving the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. The Holy Prophet Muhammad was able to transform the people of Mecca. He was able to transform the people of Mecca in 22, 22 short years. And how did he achieve this? How did he achieve this? He did so by manifesting the moral attributes of Almighty Allah to his fullest. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his DNA, his DNA is all of the beautiful attributes that is to be found. These moral virtues embrace numerous personal, personal qualities, in fact. Some of these attributes we all are familiar with because many of your names have these attributes. But I will mention these attributes in English. Some of these attributes are self-respect, respect for others, kindness. The Rasul was the kindest man on the face of the earth. Sympathy and honesty, the most forgiving. That was the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Simplicity, cleanliness, gentleness, courage. This was the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Goodness, nobility, patience, steadfastness, perseverance, charity, generosity. This was the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Self-control, contentment, cheerfulness, helpfulness, gratitude, chastity, tolerance, love, unselfishness, and many more can be added to this list. These attributes the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam manifests in his life. Next example of virtue, no example of virtue excel that of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. The following verse taken from a poem written by Hazrat Masih Maud, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, extol the high morals of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we all know how much the promised Messiah loved the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will get to this. But this is a poem from the promised Messiah about the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I quote, the promised Messiah says, what a noble man, what a noble man, what a comely man. His breath smells like the breath of flowers. God is visible in his face. Such are his virtues, such in his case. This is why he is loved. Indeed, his virtues demand that he should be loved to the exclusion of all. Easy of access, noble, bounteous, friend of God faring, and he excels all in excellence nobility in glory and beauty of the soul Muhammad is the best of creatures the soul of the nobles the elect of the elect all noble virtues have found their limit in him the blessings of all times have found their place in him by God Muhammad is next to God. And and through him alone can we reach God. He is the pride of the pious, the holies. He is the pride of the men of virtue. He excels all those who were honored before him. Indeed, excellence is a matter of virtue, not of time. That was a poem by Hazrat Messiah Maud, the promised Messiah. Nara Takbi, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, Hazrat Khadmul Amiya, Mosinay Sanya, Wulaim Aki, Nara Takbi. 
falling in love with the attributes I have just mentioned and the poem of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, falling in love with his attributes is like falling in love with the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him himself. He manifests these attributes in the fullest. And if one continues to act upon these attributes, it will ultimately lead one to the gateway to divine love, to Almighty God. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, said, he said, there is much blessings to be had in reciting the Darud Sharif. Our beloved Hazur, our beloved Hazur, Ayatollah bin Nasir Aziz, may Almighty God continue to strengthen our dear Hazur, as Mizras Mas Masur Ahmed, strengthen his hands and give him long life. Let's hear what Hazur have to say. Our beloved Hazur says, I continually, I, he, said, he, said, con, he said continually reminding, we should continue to, re, to recite the Darud. In his Friday sermon, Hazur says, and I quote here, this was of August 15, 2014, Hazur Khalifa to Masi, the fifth, Ayatollah bin Nasir al-Aziz. He says, Hazur said, indeed God sent his chosen ones to give spiritual life to people. Hazor said the believers should therefore always respond to the command of Almighty God, of God's appointment, appointed messenger, and try to reform themselves. Hazor says, our beloved Hazor says, indeed, God sent the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, to give spiritual life to the believers. Hazor said, God sent down for us the complete and perfect chariot in the form of the Holy Prophet, in the form of rather the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing of God be upon him. And he said, the Holy Prophet Muhammad is an embodiment of the Holy Quran. Hazor said, therefore, if we desire true spiritual life, if we desire true spiritual life, we should follow the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, and act upon his instructions. Hazor further went on, Hazor says, that in accordance with the Holy Quran, the verse which we have quoted in the beginning of this speech, Chapter 3, Al-Imran, verse 32, English, if you love Allah, follow me, then will Allah love you. Again, our dear Khalifa went on to say, it is incumbent upon a person who wants to obtain the love of Almighty God to follow the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. Indeed, the true spiritual life can only be attained to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazor said, therefore, in order to gain it, one must obey and follow the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to one's best ability. Then Hazor closed, he says, that it was said about the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, that all his actions were motivated and rooted in the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran, Hazor stated, that even the enmity of a people should not incite us to act other than with justice, that we should not shed blood without reason, that dues of mankind should be paid, and that the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, is a mercy for all of mankind. In short, Hazor said, as we read the Holy Quran, we find that it continues to guide us in every matter. That was the life of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. End of quote from Hazur. I may add at this time, when the companions of Hazrat Aisha Raziel and her, when the companions asked the wife of the prophet, Hazrat Aisha, when they asked her, O oh, prophet of God, O oh, oh, prophet of God, tell us something about the holy prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she replied in the affirmative. She, applied, she replied in the affirmative. The holy prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was an embodiment of the holy Quran. So, love for the holy prophet Muhammad is love for the holy Quran. They are inseparable, and this will ultimately lead one to the gateway to divine love. Verse 22 of Surah Al-Azab states, Verily you have in the Prophet of Almighty God of Allah an excellent model for him who hopes to meet Allah on the last day and who remembers him much. In the words of the promised Messiah, again, peace be upon him, the promised Messiah says, There is no doubt that the knowledge of God and his unity is gained by man only through a prophet and cannot be achieved otherwise. The promised Messiah says, the highest example in this regard was set by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, who lifted a whole people out of the filth in which they were steeped 
and convey them to garden. The promised Messiah said, the Holy Prophet Muhammad, he provided excellent spiritual food and drink for those who were on the point of death because, spiritu because of spiritual starvation, rather. He raised them from their animal condition to the condition of man and then civilized them and made them, that is the people of Mecca, and made them perfect and exhibited so many signs that they were able to see God and brought about such a change in them that they began to shake hands with angels. No other prophet was able to bring about such a complete change in his people for their followers did not achieve perfection. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him, stated in his farewell address, O oh man, what I say to you, you must hear and remember all Muslims are as brother, a brethren, one to another. All of you are equal. All men, whatever nation or tribe you may belong to, and whatever station in life you may hold are equal. While he was saying this, the prophet raised his hands and joined the fingers of one hand with the fingers of the other. And he says, even as the fingers of the two hands are equal, so are human beings equal to one another. No one has any right, any superiority to claim over another. You are as brothers. Allah. Allah has made you like brothers, each, each other. So, so be not divided. He says, an Arab is no better than a non-Arab. He says a white is no better than a black, and a black is no better than a white. He said, I am, leaving, I am leaving something with you that will safeguard you against all error if you hold fast to it. That is the holy book, the holy Quran. As soon as the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ended his talk, God sent him the following revelation to him. He says, this day have I perfected your religion for you and have chosen Islam as a religion. This was the last verse revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. The Holy Quran was the Holy Quran was now a complete book. Loving the Holy Quran is like loving the Holy Prophet Muhammad that will lead us to the gateway to divine love. In conclusion, my brothers and sisters, in conclusion, the door of divine love is open to any and all who strive to walk in the footsteps of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. In today's world, in today's world, my brothers and sisters, in today's world, there is no better example than the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mizugudah Muhammad, because of his love and devotion to the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing of God be upon him. He is called the Baruj, the reflection of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The promised Messiah is called the Zil, the shadow of the Holy Prophet Muhammad means anywhere you go, your shadow is always following you. That was Hazrat Messiah Maud, Hazrat Mizugudah Muhammad, the shadow of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was also called the Zil, the Baruj. The promised Messiah loved the Holy Prophet Muhammad so much, he said that he was in fact the closest example in modern society. As a result of the love and affection the promised Messiah had for the Holy Prophet Muhammad, Peace and blessing of God be upon him. The promised Messiah, in fact, the, the, the promised Messiah, we have been told, Almighty Allah made his heart part of his throne. Allah will continue, Allah will continue to descend upon the hearts in the future also, according to their respective statue. But now the claim, the love of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, the claim of his perfect obedience will prove true, and, true and, and only when the bond of love and obedience with the spiritual son, the spiritual son is established. And that is why the promised Messiah say, establish a bond of love and obedience with me and, all, and all, with, with me above all other relations rather. This is how one will follow the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and subsequently attain Allah's love. The promised Messiah says, he said, this is not saying this lightly. The Holy Prophet himself has told us, the, Pro the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa have told us, he said, if you see the time of the Messiah and Mahdi, 
If you see the time of the Messiah and Mahdi, you should go and convey my salams to him, even if you have to crawl on your knees. What is the message, the promised Messiah said, what is the message in this emphasis, in taking so much pain to convey this salam? What is the wisdom behind it? The Holy Prophet is pointing out that the promised Messiah is dear to him, and he is dear to the promised Messiah. This is a matter of principle, that you reach the ones you love to the loved ones. Therefore, he said, if you want to become my follower, follow the promised Messiah and accept him as the Imam of the age. In further conclusion, my brothers, for the sake of time, I would like to mention the love the promised Messiah had for the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam. That his son, by the name of Mizr Sultan Ahmed, the promised Messiah, his son, he says that when someone would speak ill against the promised Messiah, his eyes would, would harden, his face would become red, and he would immediately leave the place. The promised Messiah has written in his book, Aina Kamalat e Islam, that a Christian, a Christian clergy have invented lies and false allegations against our holy prophet and thereby, through falsehood and deceit, have misinformed many people. This is the promised Messiah in ending. The promised Messiah says, my heart has never been fermented too much by their taunts and insult which they have leveled against his fair name. The promised Messiah says the offensive words of abuse which they use against the holiest of men have wounded my heart. The promised Messiah says I call Allah as a witness. I call Allah as a witness that even if all of my children and all of my grandchildren and all of my friends and all of my relatives and all members of my family were cut to pieces in front of my very eyes, if my own hands and feet were cut off, if the pupils of my eyes were torn out and I am deprived of all nearness and, 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 and dearest wishes and joys of life, then that pain would be more bearable than the torment I suffer from the vile attack on the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessing of God be upon you. Therefore, O Allah, have mercy upon us. Bless us with thy help and secure and save us from his great trial. This is what's going to lead us to the gateway to Almighty God, to divine love. All praise due to Almighty God. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala li Muhammadin.